point okay, out is that the memorandum. Uh, what I'd also like to point out is uh, I, I've been um, I've been a burr under their saddle for quite some time. Once she, she wrote Rick at the city manager here. At I Santa wrote Maria. Rick. Uh, yeah, a year after Area Nine, uh, the Area Nine ordinance is passed. Close up of this memorandum. And what did what did Rick tell us here in this memorandum? Well, what he said was that uh, this is dated uh, 2013. Well, actually, this is this is the uh, this is the uh, attachment. Yeah, July second, two thousand thirteen. July second, July third, two thousand thirteen. July third, two thousand thirteen. That's exactly one year before Steve Adams down in Aurora Grande got caught by the fire department with uh, one of his underlings at midnight or something <laughs> at City Hall and AG, and they still haven't fired him. But go ahead, I diver I. I digress. I you know digress. too much, Walter. Yes, I yes. Know too you want to just you want to lay it on, lay it on him, Bill. <laughs> so here's the deal. In this memorandum, um, Lawrence Apple, the uh, 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 director of community development, states the city currently has provisions that would allow the drilling and production of oil and gas within open zoned parcels, open space zoned parcels. This would include all city parks as well as retention basins. He basically said the same thing in the March 28, 2012 article, Back to the Future, uh, the, the Santa Maria Times. Uh, they have... Uh, so they gave us a warning. They gave us a warning. They gave us fair warning. They We're going to stick it to you, people. Yeah, but if you <laughs> don't pay attention to what's going on in your town, we're anything gonna, can happen. We're going to really stick it to you. So uh, ultimately, what happened is that because of many complaints of, from myself and other Soda 9 members, uh, many of which have moved on because of just sheer uh, frustration. Some have sold their houses. Uh, some have uh, uh, retired from, from the field uh, because they're frustrated. It seems that there's the harder you try, the further it gets away. But we're coming up onto an election. And we have a ballot initiative, Measure P, which curtails does fracking. Not, does not prevent does, all of it. Does not prevent all of it. Uh, uh, the, uh, the catch term is ban. Uh, most people think when they hear ban that that's a total, a total quash of the whole thing. No. What, what Measure P does is it allows current, uh, current oil operations to continue. If you're permitted, before the election, you can continue. Your jobs continue, your operations continue. But Santa Maria Energy's proposal in January 2014 to place 7,700 oil wells from Orchid to Guadalupe, that's what turned the Measure P proponents, the water guardians, that's what got their attention. And people have said that this is a North County, South County issue, no. South County saw North County in peril and came to our aid, dug deep in their pockets, took their inheritance, took their money, hired an attorney to draft Measure P. Now, we have been told that they are the bad guys, but who do you trust? Who do you trust? Yeah, who do you trust? I mean, I... Walter, I have stopped voting. I not only stopped voting when they cheated Ron Paul out of the nomination on the Republican side, I unregistered to vote so nobody could vote for me even if oh, they wanted to. They can't vote. I stopped voting because when I saw them pass fluoride, mm -hmm. when it didn't pass, when I saw everybody doing the mandatory 2% recount at the girls' club in Goleta, mm. and I went in there with my camera and said, no, no cameras, you can't. So I taped all their bumper stickers. Everyone was an Obama car. Everyone doing the... There wasn't one Republican doing the mandatory 2% recount. Every single one. And they, they oh, we're going to call this one. I said, call them. I want them to come. I want them to care and answer some questions. You're violating the election code here. We, until we get back to hand-counted ballots by old people like me, and you're going to be soon. <laughs> what do you mean, going to be? When we get back to old people at the precinct counting the ballots one at a time, then I will vote again. And that issue, nobody's brought that up to the county supervisor. They just quietly did away with hand-counted ballots. So we don't know anymore, and I have proof that the elections have been stolen in the past. With the flip of a switch, we're down to like 
three minutes left. Mm -hmm. What are we going well, to finish? Well, what I'd also like to do is I'd, sh I'd like to show you uh, uh, slide nine, which is the. Uh, um, Oh, actually, uh, uh, well, you saw slide nine, slide ten, which is the uh, which is the uh, memo I received from uh, uh, City Manager Rick Hayden. That's it. And um, there it is. Well, that's that's the uh, that's the memorandum from uh, Larry Apple, uh, Director of Community Development, uh, where it states at the bottom that um, accordingly, my previous knowledge of oil permitting of the oil permitting process is what enabled the city to craft the permitting provisions for Area 9. Uh, this was uh, the former petroleum engineer for Santa Barbara County. This is his idea. This is his agenda. And uh, as, as, as I said before, um, people who are close to city council have said city council is a rubber stamp. It is a rubber stamp. For the staff. We should recall the entire city council. Oh, we tried to do that years ago, but the Santa Maria Times sold us out, refused to publish the required ad. Even though we gave them the money, they refused the money. So we got to find a way to get around the Santa Maria Times. I don't even read them anyway. We're out of time. What else did you got to flash through here really quick? Well, um, one minute. Well, that's about it. That's about it. William. Okay. Uh, uh, but I would like to say, though, that um, when you when you think of big oil, uh, what do you think of? You think of Exxon Valdez. You think of the Horizon disaster in the Gulf. Uh, you think of Greca spilling oil uh, in Orchid, and uh, and and there's the Channel 12 uh, 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 on-air personality trying to film it, and he said the Greca people wouldn't let us film it. So what are they worried about? When we show up and we film them mitigating contamination, why do they get nervous? They get nervous because they don't want you to know that it's against your self-interest to vote no on Measure P. Yes for protection, yes for clean air, yes for clean water. And we need to recall the entire city council and really go through with it this time. Okay, oh, or, well, thank or, you, Walter. Or vote for, for a new direction, people who can actually lead, like, you know, Tony Coles. Okay, I just want to mention before we go here, the Harvest Festival in Aurora Grandy is September 26th and 27th. Got nothing to do with Steve Adams, that dirty dog, doing somebody else's wife on the city property, in the thing. Oh, no, he didn't do that. I, I didn't say that. Well, one thing I but like he to... was caught there, and she, according to one of the policemen or firemen, she was still tucking in her clothes, mm -hmm. and he was saying, she's not here, she's not here, and there she was hiding behind the door. What, what, but what, go to the festival, because there's a lot of good people there on the 26th, 27th. Go ahead, Walter. Right. Um, this Sunday at the Westgate, community, uh, Westgate Park Community Room, um, I will be showing a free uh, uh, viewing of Gasland 2 uh, between 2 and 5. Come on over. The, the room's air-conditioned. It's a nice park. What day? Uh, uh, that's this Sunday. The, this uh, Sunday? The, the 12th. Very good. Well, yeah, And uh, there will be a series, uh, uh, six consecutive uh, Sundays thereafter. Uh, Tony Coles, Heidi Carmen, Larry Apple will be there. Um, I will give a pre presentation on the 5th. Uh, look in your Santa Maria Sun Times. Uh, it's going to be there. Uh, it's going to come out uh, next week, and you'll see the Thank schedule. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Walter, for coming on the live show. Sure. People, you weren't Why told everything about 9-11. You weren't told That's anything about the third eight building, eight Seven World Trade Center, which no plane hit. Questions. And as you just noticed in the last three days, none of the major Third. networks That's talked about it. Listen to these guys. Now, these are professors and solar, experts with no political axe to grind. I give you Professor steel. Jones and from a, Utah. A female student who was trying to time that, <laughs> she said, there's no way. And, it, and it's cut through. Okay, aluminum. You guys are right on, right? Aluminum, sulfur, manganese, and iron. Those are the main compounds. Now here it comes. Ta da This is the dust. Uh, dust particle from the World Trade Center from Jeanette McKinley's sample and we see I showed this to, I showed no, nothing up my sleeve nothing nothing ah magician nothing up my sleeve Willie 
There is nothing. <laughs> no, this is science. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, I showed this to Doug uh, Rocky last night. He, he got teary-eyed looking at this. I'll let you describe some implications, Doug, if you would. I think... But anyway, look. <clears throat> Iron, this is the sulfur peak, folks. It's off scale. Or nearly, because huh? they scale up, but it goes almost to aluminum. We see copper as well. So we can tell you what they put in the thermate. Then these data, hot off the press, last Wednesday, okay? Iron oxide, aluminum powder, copper oxide, and if you look, here's another plot, another spot shows potassium, potassium permanganate. I can tell you what they put in there. Now let's let Doug comment, if you would, Doug. When we saw the data, now I, I, I knew about this already, but when I saw the data last night, it was very, very really obvious. Willie, where are you at? Right here. Here Okay. This is Willie, you and my friends in the emergency services unit, as you were in the floors, what did you hear, sir? I heard explosions, and I had this uh, horrible smell that uh, got stuck on my throat. What, what was the smell? I'm going to repeat. What did you smell? It was like ammonium and sulfur that stuck on my throat. And I did make a, a comment on television five days after because they asked me. And that was uh, September 15 or 16 on television, national television in Spanish. And I'm talking about this acrid smoke. I'm talking about this acrid smoke television, national television in Spanish, and I'm talking about this acrid smoke. Uh, where's David? David, in uh, 911 in plain sight, you specifically talked to and have on camera members of the New York Police and Fire Department, and what the, specifically did they say? Okay, um, I don't want to uh, misspeak. Uh, some of the footage that is in, in plain sight came from television networks, and as far as the firefighters are concerned, there were lots of folks that said that they felt that they were choking, although I don't have the description like Willie has, you know, an acrid smell, uh, sulfur, et cetera, et cetera. But the overwhelming majority of the people that we review the videotape, some of it went into the project, some of it didn't, basically saying the same thing. They were choking and couldn't, you know, they get into the lungs and then they can't breathe. There are There is a video out there where they have the police and the fire, and the guys are saying it was explosions going off four by four, bang, 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 bang. The implications are incredible. We have a building in free fall. We have a building with a massive steel structure, both externally and internally. If you look at an automobile today, you will know, and it's bragged about, that automobiles are designed and built such that they have a crush zone, which means that you have deformation due to conservation of momentum that absorbs the energy through conservation of energy to allow the energy to be absorbed before it gets to the passenger compartment. Most specifically, we see this in NASCAR. In order for this building to fall like this, you would think in a common sense thing, as the building started to fall, unless I'm missing something in all my years of physics, you would have stuff bent all over the place. You would not have the stuff just coming down in a rubble pile which suggests, based on Willie's direct observations and hearing, the direct observations of police and fire, the radio transmissions, our radio transmissions, with the explosions going off. Is that correct, Willie? That is, did everybody hear that is correct? The implications are overwhelming. Specialized explosives were placed within the World Trade Center to allow this building to come down. It's not box cutters. Uh, I, I want to ask a question. I remember I was a janitor. I'm a layman. I don't understand this. But I want to ask Professor Jones and, and Dr. Dark Rocky. By the way, we are both professors. <laughs> <laughs> my question is, uh, does this data validate my story about the explosions that I experienced in the building? Yeah, look. <clears throat> William, the, the, 
certainly these data validate that there were pre-planted explosives, and we can identify the components now. At least, the sun. by the way, super thermite is a explosive form of thermite. You also saw the thermite jet. But anyway, so yes, and of course the sulfur is just characteristic. Another lab, WPI, discusses, didn't explain, but they said, look, we observe high temperature corrosion and sulfidation. They asked the question, where did the sulfur come from? Now we have an answer. And then, of course, the seismic data confirms that there was a shock before the plane hit the tower. All of these corroborate your testimony. And I still want to see you get that Nobel Peace Prize. Oh. Yeah. In my research for the Department of the Army, the Department of Defense, I have used thermite explosives. They are very specialized explosives that can be attached to structures and set off by remote control. That's specifically what I did do. Well, I didn't do it. I had the experts of the experts do it, and they will remain anonymous. So the question, ladies and gentlemen, that you're left with, based on the evidence, based on the observations, based on the knowledge, based on the data, what do you think happened? But more important, why have the leaders of our nation refused repeatedly to answer all of these questions with all the available data? So let me, I would like to mention one last thing. If you, if people keep asking me, what can they do? And uh, there's some good ideas out there. No shopping for a whole week, hit them economically. April 15th, go to, uh, we are not buying it, Peter Phillips. We are not buying it. Here's these articles. Uh, so I about cold fusion, my work there. 9-11 Truth and Justice Squads. These go way back. I have a video clip. I'd love to show it. But if you Google on John Gross, an uh, inspector, uh, a person on the NIST committee, being asked a question by these young college students about the molten metal. And uh, his answer is fascinating. So Google on that if you would. Return to the United States Constitution, one of my big hopes. Repeal the Bush Doctrine, war, yes. which is war of aggression. Yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, legal challenges, certainly. FEMA change, impeachments on the table. Uh, now here we get to the last. Building local infrastructure, shopping at local stores rather than buying at globalized stores. I think this is quite important. A voluntary simplicity in our lives so that we're not under the thumb of these guys. And this is the last thing. I think it's important while we are working for positive change that we prepare for difficulties which will probably lie ahead. To get people to wake up historically takes a famine or at least some kind of recession. I anticipate that and therefore I'm storing food. You're welcome to share, but I don't have all that much. <laughs> and uh, water, warm clothing, solar energy. The solar cooker that I invented and developed is in the upper right hand corner. If you go to profjones.com you can learn more about the solar cooker, assuming my webmaster student has put it up there already, I hope so, with the links. And that's, uh, if we keep working on these values, folks, fitness, victory gardens, we can get independent of the system and we can succeed yes. together. Why have the leaders of our nation refused repeatedly to answer all of these questions with all the available data? But more important, why have the leaders of our nation refused repeatedly to answer all of these questions with all the available data? Uh, Thermate. That's what makes it. Thermite adds sulfur. It's now thermate. Sulfur, and this is 
that will now cut through that steel cup very quickly in a fraction of a second. I had a, a female student who was trying to time that, and <laughs> she said, there's no way, and it, it's cut through. Okay, aluminum. You guys are right on, right? Aluminum, sulfur, manganese, and iron. Those are the main compounds. Now here it comes. Ta da This is the dust, uh, dust particle from the World Trade Center from Jeanette McKinley's sample. And we see, I showed this, to, I showed, no, nothing up my sleeve, nothing, nothing, ah, magician, nothing up my sleeve, Willie, there is nothing, <laughs> no, this is science, uh, <clears throat> anyway, I showed this to Doug uh, Rocky last night, he, he got teary-eyed looking at this, I'll let you describe some implications, Doug, if you would, I think, but anyway, look, <clears throat> iron, this is the sulfur peak, folks. It's off scale, or nearly, huh? because they scale it, but it goes almost to aluminum. We see copper as well. So we can tell you what they put in the thermate. Then these data, hot off the press, last Wednesday, okay? Iron oxide, aluminum powder, copper oxide, and if you look, here's another plot, another spot shows potassium, potassium permanganate. I can tell you what they put in there. Now let's let Doug comment, if you would, Doug. When we saw the data, now I, I, I knew about this already, but when I saw the data last night, it was very readily obvious. Willie, where are you at? Right here. Come here. Okay. This is Willie. Bad. You and my friends in the emergency services unit, as you were in the floors, what did you hear, sir? I heard explosions, and I had this uh, horrible smell that uh, got stuck on my throat. What, what was the smell? I'm going to repeat. What did you smell? It was like ammonium and sulfur that stuck on my throat, and I did make a, a comment on television five days after because they asked me, and I was... Uh, September 15 or 16 on television, national television in Spanish, and I'm talking about this acrid smoke. I'm talking about this acrid smoke. On television, national television in Spanish, and I'm talking about this acrid smoke. Uh, where's David? David, in uh, 911 in plain sight, you specifically talk to and have on camera members of the New York Police and Fire Department, and what specifically did they say? Okay, uh, I don't want to uh, misspeak. Uh, some of the footage that is in, in plain sight came from television networks, and as far as the firefighters are concerned, there were lots of folks that said that they felt that they were choking, although I don't have the description like Willie has, you know, an acrid smell, uh, sulfur, et cetera, et cetera, but the overwhelming majority of the people that we review the videotape, some of it went into the project, some of it didn't, basically saying the same thing. They were choking, they couldn't, you know, they get into the lungs and then they can't breathe. There are, there are a video out there where they have the police and the fire, and the guys are saying it was explosions going off four by four, bang, 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 bang. The implications are incredible. We have a building in free fall. We have a building with a massive steel structure, both externally and internally. If you look at an automobile today, you will know, and it's bragged about, that automobiles are designed and built such that they have a crush zone, which means that you have deformation due to conservation of momentum that absorbs the energy through conservation of energy to allow the energy to be absorbed before it gets to the passenger compartment. Most specifically, we see this in NASCAR. In order for this building to fall like this, you would think in a common sense thing, as the building started to fall, unless I'm missing something in all my years of physics, you would have stuff bent all over the place. You would not have the stuff just coming down in a rubble pile which suggests, based on Willie's direct observations and hearing the direct observations of police and fire, the radio transmissions, our radio transmissions, with the explosions going off. Is that correct, Willie? That is, did everybody hear that is correct? The implications are overwhelming. 
specialized explosives were placed within the World Trade Center to allow this building to come down. It's not box cutters. Uh, I, I want to ask a question. I remember I was a janitor. I'm a layman. I don't understand this. But I want to ask Professor Jones and, and Dr. Darkworthy. By the way, we are both professors. <laughs> my question is, uh, does this data validate my story about the explosions that I experienced in the building? Yeah, look, <clears throat> William, the, the, certainly these data validate that there were pre-planted explosives, and we can identify the components now. At least, the sun. by the way, super thermite is a explosive form of thermite. You also saw the thermite jet. But anyway, so yes, and of course the sulfur is just characteristic. Another lab, WPI, discusses, didn't explain, but they said, look, we observe high temperature corrosion and sulfidation. They asked the question, where did the sulfur come from? Now we have an answer. And then, of course, the seismic data confirms that there was a shock before the plane hit the tower. All of these corroborate your testimony. And I still want to see you get that Nobel Peace Prize. Oh. Yeah. In my research for the Department of the Army, the Department of Defense, I have used thermite explosives. They are very specialized explosives that can be attached to structures and set off by a remote control. That's specifically what I did do. Well, I didn't do it. I had the experts of the experts do it, and they will remain anonymous. <laughs> so the question, ladies and gentlemen, that you're left with, based on the evidence, based on the observations, based on the knowledge, based on the data, what do you think happened? But more important, why have the leaders of our nation refused repeatedly to answer all of these questions with all the available data? So let me, I would like to mention one last thing. If you, people keep asking me, what can they do? And uh, there's some good ideas out there. No shopping for a whole week, hit them economically. April 15th, go to, uh, we are not buying it, Peter Phillips. We are not buying it. Peer-reviewed articles, uh, so I about cold fusion, I work there. 9-11 Truth and Justice Squads, these go way back. I have a video clip, I'd love to show it, but if you Google on John Gross, an uh, inspector, uh, a person on the NIST committee, being asked a question by these young college students about the molten metal, and uh, his answer is fascinating. So Google on that if you would. Return to the United States Constitution, one of my big hopes. Repeal the Bush Doctrine, war, yes. is war of aggression. Yes. yes. Thank you. Uh, legal challenges, certainly. FEMA changing impeachments on the table. Uh, now here I get to the last. Building local infrastructure, shopping at local stores rather than buying at globalized stores. I think this is quite important. A voluntary simplicity in our lives so that we're not under the thumb of these guys. And this is the last thing. I think it's important while we are working for positive change that we prepare for difficulties which will probably lie ahead. To get people to wake up historically takes a famine or at least some kind of recession. I anticipate that and therefore I'm storing food. You're welcome to share, but I don't have all that much. <laughs> and uh, water, warm clothing, solar energy. The solar cooker that I invented and developed is in the upper right hand corner. You go to profjones.com, you can learn more about the solar cooker, assuming my webmaster student has put it up there already, I hope so, with the links. And that's, uh, if we keep working on these values, folks, fitness, victory gardens, we can get independent of the system and we can succeed yes. together. <laughs>